All right, welcome back to Shave with Fuzzy. I'm Fuzzy. Hi, y'all, on Sunday afternoon. So it is Sunday afternoon, and it is August 1st, which means we have uh, another month behind us already. I don't know about y'all, but it's flying by around here. And uh, there's a little light of moon. It is just flying by, but it is August 1st. So that means a couple things. Like I said, start of a new month, end of an old month, out with the old, end with the new, rolling right along. Not a bad thing, eh? Everybody enjoys getting older. BC Alternative. And if you're not enjoying getting older, suck it up, Buttercup. It's just what goes on. You know, people have the most birthdays, live the longest. So let's, uh, let's keep working on that record, all right? That also means that uh, at work tonight, I'll have to hike all the stairs in the stairwells because it's time for the monthly emergency stairwell intercom check. So I got to hike up and down all them stairs tonight. Luckily, I average about eight and a half miles a day walking when I'm working both jobs. And uh, so I don't really have any problems walking. I used to walk more than that, but uh, I, I think that's plenty. And I'm sure there's plenty of people in the world that walk a whole lot more than that. But uh, eight, eight and a half miles a day, anywhere from seven and a half to eight and a half, whatever, um, is, is plenty good. So I get to do that tonight at work. It's a 12 hour shift. I got plenty of time. I don't have to get in any hurry. But there's three buildings and they each have their, so anyway, just one of those monthly things we do. It also means that it is the first Sunday of the month. Now, I hope so happens the sun, first Sunday of the month ends up on the first day of the month this month. So uh, first Sunday of the month to toast is the, your favorite lather catcher day. Now, there is no one favorite lather catcher. Somebody mentioned that the other day. They're all my favorites and there's a reason for that because they're all awesome, really. So uh, what I do is I, I said, okay, well, I pick my favorite for the day. And that's what we're going to do today. It's one that I haven't used in a while. It's also one of my most beautiful set. I think I actually had promised to give this set to somebody. And then all this COVID stuff happened and they kind of dropped out of the world. And uh, they haven't got it yet. But that's not saying they never will. Um, one of these days. Okay, so what I have, beautiful little box. Now this is, like I said, this is one of my most gorgeous sets. I used to have a Jim Jujum bar that had a box that was about this good. And uh, somebody who will remain mostly unnamed, Luna, decided when she was younger and jumped up on the table that, that the box would look good splintered. So the box is gone, been gone. So I no longer have that really beautiful box. And I've given away a couple of good boxes. But anyway, this, what is in the box, Fuzzy, you say? Here's what I say. It's a crew steel. It's a star razor. And they called it the crew steel. And they had the crew steel blaze. Now, this is another one like the Dama scheme where the razor goes by that name because it was made to advertise those blades. And uh, I don't know what was special about the crew steel blades, but uh, anyway, that's what the razor was made to, uh, to advertise. So I actually have in this set, and I think I show this off every time I shave with this one, I actually have some crew steel blades. But let me show you what, what that looks like. And uh, get that back down over there. They're under the, uh, you know, the right here on the side, this is a, is a blade holder. So under there, you can see on the edge there how it fits in there. There's blades. And they were wrapped in the, uh, like this. So let me get my glasses on here. So they came wrapped, and these are the these are the heavy blades. These are the ones that are heavy with a thick spine and everything that you were actually made to. Uh, so these are specially hardened and tempered crucible steel. They have crucible steel, crucible steel. Uh, delightful shaving qualities. Uh, shave in star gem ever ready razors it says and then a star crew steel blades is what it says on the front there so that's how the packaging look now i've always said that i was going to try one day to see if one of these blades would shave never really had that much success on these old blades trying to get a shave out of them but when you pop it out of the, the cardboard wrapper and you get it with the blade there right along the top there it says camp brothers new york star crew steel crucible yeah Crew steel, sorry, star crew steel on one side, and it says Camp Brothers on the other side. You pop them out, and they look like that right there. Isn't that nice? That is so neat. And uh, there's no rust that I see. So I've always thought, why don't we pop one in and just give it a try? Now, this is, uh, since it was made to use the heavy blades, it was made to have the blades drop. So the, the strop in attachment isn't here. However, we're gonna try this without the strop in attachment. What we're gonna do is we're gonna give it a try, a couple of strokes usually start on the right side of my face so we'll give it a try if it looks like it's going to shave we'll shave with it if not we're just going to change out and put a uh 
put the old star blade that we've been using, the old uh, gym blade that we've been using here the last couple of shaves in and, uh, and finish the shave up with it. We're not gonna take the time to do all the stropping. However, I may take the time to do the stropping between shaves and see if I can strop it enough and get it to work. So if that blade doesn't work, we're gonna go back to a gym. Now, truth in advertising, that is still the stainless gym blade that I've been using. I don't just use a blade once and chunk it. I don't always know how many times I have on a blade, but it's never just once. So that's our gonna be our lather catcher Sunday. All right, so we're gonna use the vintage uh, Colgate because we haven't used it in a while. This is actually the barber shop. Uh, they started making it in like 1917, if I remember correctly from what I read. This is another one of the uh, scuttles, and this one is the one that was customized by, I think Luna knocked it off. A lot of, you know, when you have puppies, these things happen. So anyway, the handle had to be glued back together. The Gorilla Glue. I think I like Gorilla Glue these days better than I like, uh, you know, better than I like, uh, what was the old, uh, anyway, Super Glue. To me, it's easier to use, it's dry, whatever. But anyhow, Gorilla Glue is good stuff. It's been holding on that. We've got the uh, horse brush. Not the one that I put the knot in, but the actual uh, belong horse brush. And a little something I haven't used in a while. I've got that much of it left, and you don't find it anymore. Barbasol musk. And I wish we still found it because I like the Barbasol musk, I think, actually better than the Aqua Velva musk. And I do like the Aqua Velva musk. All right. So let's get this together. That's not anybody knocking on the door. That's Miss Luna running around her tail beating on something. So anyway, here in the box, as you can see, we do have the shopping attachment. This would go into the, uh, you know, the bottom of the handle. If you haven't seen how these works, I'll take a minute here, we'll show you. It would go into the bottom of the handle and then you would put the blade in as the blade would slide in and that gives you a handle to hold the blade to strop. So you could drop it just like you would a straight razor. Okay, well there we go. That's uh that's how that works. So let's uh now I will say I think I've already said I don't usually have success. I don't think I've ever had success using one of these vintage blades. We're gonna give it a go. So anyway, it is a ladder catcher. Doesn't have the top on it. It's got the ladder catcher shape. This is a ladder catcher. It fits. It works. It's got the uh, on the side there. It's got the uh, slides. So we're gonna take our actual crew steel blade, star crew steel blade, the blade that was made to be used with a razor. And like I said, it was marketing and advertising. And we're gonna put it in and then it's got a lever in the back. I love these razors that have the levers, levers, whatever, in the back that you pull up to hold the blade in. I just, I, I think that was a nice, simple design. It pushes the blade up against the stop so it's not going anywhere and you end up with something that looks like that. All right, well, you know, got the handle screwed on. That's what the handle looks like. Yes, it, we, we did. We got the handle screwed on this linen. Yes, that's exciting. I understand. Yes. She's ready to go out for a walk. So anyway, today was a long day. We got off work this morning. And uh, Friday was a really long day. Uh, I worked both. I worked, uh, I got off 7 o'clock Friday morning. You know, Fridays are that short turnaround day. Well, in between doing my short turnaround, I went to Metairie over by Baton Rouge, uh, New Orleans and picked up Agent 007. So I got like an hour's sleep that day. And then I've been working the weekends and working along to Saturday. I worked the store in there. And um, anyway, so I've got 12 hours today to sleep. So I did get a little sleep. Anyway, this morning we took Agent 007 and Fuzzy. You may remember Fuzzy. I showed Fuzzy before, the puppy Fuzzy, not me. But uh, anyway, the brown and white puppy, I've shown him before uh, when he was a lot smaller. He's a full grown old man now. But anyway, Fuzzy was over. So Luna got to play with Fuzzy and, and uh, uh, Agent 00 Devin got to do some business he needed to do in town and I took them back home this morning. So anyway, she had been out for a walk today. She got a little road ride. It's like 150 mile round trip. So she got a little little road trip there and uh, she got to go walk around, but she's ready to go out again. So she gets all excited when we get to move. But anyway, that's what's going on with her. All right, so let's give this a try. Like I said, multiple times so far, right? Uh, I don't expect the blade to work. I really don't. Oh, just to get back to something I briefly touched on a while before. The Louisiana legislature went back into session for the first time here a while back in an override session. They were going to override some vetoes from our governor. And uh, I think it was a couple of good things for them to override. However, they overrode nothing. $76,000. They didn't do a thing. Uh, the Senate actually did pass to override one of the bills they were working on. Didn't pass in the House. 
and then the house and the Senate neither one passed the one that I wanted them to. So anyway, you know, no worse off the law still law. But anyway, that's how it goes. Um, so once again, astounding government waste. We're not even going to get started on that because you talk about could spend forever talking about government waste. They got pretty, pretty, uh, pretty true wherever you live. Uh, different people in different parts of the world has always seemed like that's what they're talking about too. We're a whole lot better off than some countries. So anyway, we're not going to get there. All right, so here we go. Now I did not use the scuttle as the scuttle was intended to be used to soak the brush. I've just because uh, I do have running hot water and I am able to get it. So anyway. Uh, vintage Colgate. Now, vintage Colgate in my book is basically almost just as good. And if I wasn't just so biased towards the Williams, I would say it was as good as vintage Williams. It is a good vintage soap. It is not like the vintage Old Spice, which is kind of a, yeah, it's a soap. It's not like the Burma Shade, which is, yeah, it's a soap that was renamed from a soap that it never was before. That we still get nostalgic about, even though there's really no reason to. I'm guilty of that myself. Vintage Colgate is actually a really nice soap and it's easier to get uh, sometimes than uh, Vintage Williams and I have plenty of both now. I've been quietly picking some up long. Now I actually was able to buy uh, Colgate off the shelf. I, can, I did that. When I moved down to South Louisiana here in 2006 it was still on the shelves. Now, it hadn't been made in a while. I don't know when they quit making it, uh, but you can still get the, the good stuff, the tallow first uh, Colgate off the shelf in 2006. Now, like I said, this is not the mug soap, cause that was the mug soap. Before that you had the cup soap, before that you had the barbershop soap. And there's probably some others in there that I don't know about or have it. But those are the three I know of that I actually have some of. And uh, so I went around and bought up everything I could find around where I was living now time I had moved down to help uh, take care of my mom she had a big surgery so I was living over there and uh, so everywhere around over St. Martinville Louisiana that area New Iberia and Generette uh, I got some out at uh, Louisville I remember getting some I cleaned up all they had on the shelves and all the old little pharmacy and grocery stores that were you know country places and then over the years, I've ordered some off eBay and stuff, and I've been given some. Uh, I think the cup soap I have, I was actually given. I don't remember 100% sure, but I think so. But it is a good tallow first soap. It's just as good in my book as the Vintage Williams. So if you can't get Vintage Williams and you can get the Vintage Colgate, you can experience what everybody is uh, talking about with the Vintage stuff through that. Okay, here we go. Unstropped Crew Steel Blade. And uh, instead of starting with the downstrokes up here, we're going to start under the neck with the upstroke. Just, I don't know, because. And you know what? Nope, not going to do it. I don't know, though. It's not tugging too bad. You know, that might shave. We might get a shave. We're going to go ahead and try it. If we have to, we'll throw the new blade in on the touch-up if we have to. But it's not tugging and it feels like it's doing something of course this is just a regular day shave it's nothing extraordinary but these uh i mean this is you know a ladder catcher it's a really really nice shave and i think it's actually doing better than i thought it was so we'll see what we get now what i wonder sometimes and uh some of you folks out there tell me your thoughts i wonder if these old blades were ever as smooth as the blades we have these days. I wonder if the shaves, when they were new and they hadn't been sitting around for how many ever years? I mean, you know, these things would have been made, what, 20s? So 90 years ago. We're back in the 20s, so 100 years ago. You know, somewhere up or not. I wonder if uh, before they sat around that long and back uh, when they, you know, were shopping blades and stuff, I wonder if the shave ever was as smooth as what we're getting today. Or if a shave, this is, because this is, this is not a bad shave. This is a comfortable shave. It's definitely not as smooth, but it's definitely comfortable. But I wonder if it was ever as smooth as what we have today. Maybe we're striving by saying that these old blades don't give as smooth a shave, uh, you know, without, I guess you could hone them or whatever. But uh, I wonder if we're uh, looking at 
you know, sometimes we, we tend to compare older things to more modern things and they come up short. Well, maybe they're not coming up short. Maybe they're at the top of the game they were at the time. And it's just things were different then. I can go for that. You know, I know that a, uh, a well-honed straight razor can give a really smooth, just as smooth of a shave as, as modern stuff. A really well honed and, and struck uh, straight razor gives just as smooth a shave as the modern ones that use the uh, the half of the you know that use the disposable blades. And actually, in my book, it's easier to shave. And some of you folks that shave with everything, tell me what you think. In my book, it is easier to shave with a regular vintage, or it doesn't have to even be vintage, but a regular style straight razor than it is to shave with a shavette style razor. The shavettes with the thinner blades and everything, they bite a lot quicker. Is the shave any better with them? No. Not a, you know, it's a sharp blade. The, uh, the straight razor is the ultimate uh, adjustable. So without getting any more into the talk of unmentionable razors, um, I just wonder if uh, maybe we put too high expectations sometimes. That's like if you drove a, a vintage car and you're expecting it to drive like a modern car. 99% of the time, you're going to be disappointed. Now, does that mean they drive bad? or they handle bad particularly? or they're bad this or bad that? No, I don't think it means that at all. It means if you compare it to modern and you're looking for a comparison, you're going to be disappointed. I had a 1963 Chevy pickup truck, for those who like that kind of stuff. It was a long wheelbase step side. I wish I still had it. They'd be worth a bit, probably. Even if it was in really rough shape when I bought it. Bought it from an old guy. Anyway, I had the straight 6.3 on the column. And uh, comparing the, the, the drive and ride that I have in that truck is compared. We got a good shave out of that. We ain't going to have to put another blade in. We're going to do a touch-up with a uh, crew steel blade. And before I use it again, I will strop it. We'll see how that does. We'll, we'll make that an experiment in the future. But anyway, with the 63 Chevy that I had, comparing it to what I have in my Snowball, I call it, my 2011 Ram, you can't really compare the rides. Both are good. I mean, there was nothing wrong with the ride in the Chevy. I throw that thing everywhere. And that long wheelbase bed, you could throw everything I owned up in there and take it to the beach. And most of the people I knew. We even used that truck one time to move from uh, Louisiana back to Mississippi. I can remember Mom and I moving stuff. And she used to love driving that truck. That one we could drive. If it had wheels on it, she could drive it. And uh, but moving, uh, moving and stuff. And the fun thing about it was, though, it did have a light rear end. So I remember going deer hunting one morning down on a. Uh, at one time, I was a member of a pretty good hunting club before they went and really raised the prices because uh, that got to be a big business down in Esquina County, Mississippi. Matter of fact, look Esquina County up in Wikipedia, with Esquina County, Mississippi. A, you'll find out is the poorest county in the country, not just Mississippi, in the country, Esquina County, Mississippi. Two, you'll find out that they actually mentioned that part of the revenue and the income that does come in from the people in that county is hunting camps. But what happened was people from out of state and people from out of that area ended up getting all the land, the doctors and everything, and uh, they made hunting clubs, and then the locals really didn't have a whole lot of places to hunt. I got to counter that because I did still have a family place to hunt that's gone now. But anyway, so uh, I was going deer hunting one morning. I had a cousin of mine with me, going to buy uh, one of my more favorite cousins. Hadn't seen Eddie in a while, so hopefully you're doing okay over there, Eddie. I don't think Eddie watches my videos, but you know, you never know. So anyway, and uh, Early in the morning, before daylight, we're ginning along, and he wanted to ride with me. And we go around, it's a gravel road going down, because you went over the Mississippi River, so you're behind the levee, and you're going down towards the river. And uh, we came around the corner, and I'm sitting there talking, all of a sudden, the back end wanted to come around and chase the front end, because the back end was like light. And uh, I, if I remember correctly, he freaked pretty good. I didn't, I knew the truck wasn't going anywhere. I did that all the time on gravel roads and stuff. But it would definitely, uh, the back end would definitely uh, get loose on it. If you didn't have something in the back. Um, my solution to that was gonna be, I was gonna put a uh, couple of drums in the back of it and fill them up with water and have a little weight in the back. But I don't think I ever did that. And then I uh, got a little older and a little dumber and ended up selling that truck for nothing. 
because it had an oil leak at the time. I didn't do as much mechanic work as I do now. I know now it would have taken me 15 minutes and $10 to fix the oil leak. But at the time, you know, we all do things when we're young that we look back on. I did. I did. I was dating a little chunky donkey and a little son. Not mine, but I was helping raise him at the time. But anyway, a little young girl. And uh, needed a little money. Always needed money. I didn't, uh, you know, that was after uh, some things that happened. But anyway, neither here nor there. I sold the truck for a little nothing. Uh, at one point, I actually sold it and bought it back. First time I sold it, I sold it to somebody that was okay. And I bought it back from them. Their son wanted it. And uh, they kept it for a while, and then uh, I bought it back from them. And then later on, after I bought it back, I had a couple of different vehicles at the time. And, and uh, you know, anyway, I ended up selling it for a little or nothing. And I've regretted it since, like, I don't know. Didn't regret it instantly, because I wasn't smart enough at the time to, to regret it instantly. But I uh, ended up, I did. That's one of the few vehicles. I've had a lot of vehicles over the years. That is one of the few vehicles I have ever uh, had that sold that I wish I had back. All right, so there we go on with the Barbasol musk. If you can ever get a hold of any of it, I highly, highly recommend it. I have not seen any for sale, even on eBay or anywhere else in a while. Okay, so what we ended up with was a really nice shave. And uh, is it as as close as what we would get if we'd have popped the modern gym blade in? It's really close. Now, I'm not going to sit here and shave back over areas that I can still feel I mean, it's not even a sandpaper feel, but you can tell that maybe it wasn't. The cheeks are as smooth as can be, just like it would be, but right down, just, just right here. And I'm not gonna go back over it again. Like I said, I've done my touch-up pass. It's closed. Within a couple hours, even if I went back and touched it up again and went back over it, it's not gonna matter. So, can we strop that blade maybe? And next time it had that little bit extra edge on it, maybe we'll get, per possibly, we'll find out. But as it is, I mean, look, that right there, I mean, we don't shoot for, for uh, BBS, right? We shoot for uh, DFS, Delta Foxtrot Sierra, which is a, a darn fine shave. And that's what we got. We got a very high quality, darn fine shave out of a vintage blade and a vintage lather catcher. Doesn't do a whole lot better than that. And that's the first time I've used one of those vintage blades. I had some radio blades. Now I'm gonna have to see what I can do with those. One day. Well, we just about finished up our coffee. And we just about finished up our chat. Uh, as I said, if you can get a hold of some vintage Colgate, knock it out. It's just as good as the vintage Williams, if I were being honest about it. I'm never honest about it because I'm very biased towards the Williams. So you always, I'll always, always, always claim that the Williams is better, but it's probably not. And there we go. So the vintage Williams, horsehair brush. If you don't have a horsehair brush, get one. This is the V-Long, and uh, that's a, a beautiful horsehair brush. It's a mix of mane and tail. It is, uh, to me... It feels like a badger. I'm a badger. <laughs> you don't get enough sleep, and this is what you get. Really, it feels like a boar. It's it's just it's got the same stiffness as a boar, and it feels like a boar, and it's just you know kind of neat. Now I do have the one that uh, you know that we bought, and and it's just floppy. It doesn't have the backbone. Still works though. But uh, this one is not that brush. This one actually feels a lot like a, a boar brush. So then you say, well, if I got boars, why do I need a horse if they're going to be the same? Because it's neat. Sometimes you just do something because it's neat. It's fun. It's, it's cool to have. <sighs> people, people, people. Everything does not have to have this grandiose, you know, reason. Sometimes you just do it because it's cool. I've got a Ruger 1022 break now. Why do I have it? Because it's neat to get out and unzip a case and you take two pieces of a 22 rifle and you put them together and twist them and you've got a Ruger 1022. Stainless steel with the uh, synthetic if anybody's interested in that. With a scope. It's neat. Sometimes you just do things good with neat. All right, well, that's going to do us for today. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get this to upload. Sometimes I can, sometimes it takes a while. Y'all know how that goes. But uh, we're going to work on it. Hope you all having a good day where you are. We're going to go out and knock out this shift and hike up and down all them stairs. I got 12 hours to do it. It's fine. And then I'm off for the next couple of days from that job. I'll be working the other job, but I'll be off for the security job. So anyway, uh, we're going to go knock that out. Whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, especially you, Flash, because you 
said happy shaves back the other day. Whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, happy shaves to you. And, uh, you know, come over to Toast 3 and see us. That's T-O-S-T 3.com and see uh, who else. I know uh, Dave in Kentucky, viewer number seven, also known as Musketeer number two. And uh, uh, I know he was doing the uh, Lather Catcher Shave for the day. Jay already did his yesterday. And uh, I think there were a couple more people. Tomorrow, if you have an auto strop, no valets allowed. This is strictly auto strop blader. A lot of people are using the A1s. A lot of people like the A1s. And uh, there's a good reason for that. Uh, but anyway, if you have an auto strop, tomorrow is auto strop day. And we'll be back for that uh, tomorrow. And uh, everybody will be using those beautiful auto strops. So pop over to Toast, see what's going on. Come on in. It's quiet over there, folks. Crickets chirping a lot of times. There's not but a couple of people that are posting. There's plenty of room to come in and start something. Happy shaves to y'all.